Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm going to do the bookshelf tag. Now, ever since I joined booktube, I have had grand plans of doing a bookshelf tour and sharing all of my books with you because yes, I do have more books than these ones that you can see behind me. In fact, I have many more bookshelves, um, but I don't have very reliable light here in the winter. So my plans for filming over winter break went slightly awry, so you will get a full bookshelf tour. Actually, I'm gonna leave that as a surprise because that is one of the questions in this tag. So let's get into it. So the first question is, how many bookshelves do you have? And I thought it wasn't very many until I actually started to count them. And in the three different rooms, I have books on nine different bookshelves. I have this one here behind me, plus three more for my main fiction and nonfiction in this room. I then have most of one in the guest room, which houses my university books from my undergraduate degree. And I have two long ones. No, I have four in my office. Two I have shown you all already that because they house my children's and my young adult books. And I have two more in that room that house all of my readings and textbooks from my graduate degree, from my master's, as well as sheet music and periodicals, as well as a couple of shelves for crafting items. And even with all of those, I am still running out of space. The next question is, how many books do you have on those bookshelves? And honestly, I'm not sure. According to Goodreads, I, have f I own 598. But the problem with that number is some of those books I have since discarded, and Goodreads hasn't caught up. And of course, a lot of my sheet music and my textbooks are not marked on Goodreads because I did not read those for fun. And sometimes those editions do not exist on Goodreads. So it's around that number, but that's a very rough estimate. Question number three is how do you organize your books? And for the most part, I organize them like a library. So in this room with my main fiction and nonfiction, I organize my fiction alphabetically by author and my nonfiction as closely to the Dewey Decimal System as I can. I have books lumped into broad categories, like starting with general knowledge, then into religion, folk tales, language books, so on and so forth. My other rooms, for example, my university books are organized by term and order in which I read them. My sheet music is kind of a jumble. If it's loose sheet music, it's shoved in wherever I can find the space. But I have tried to group it by violin music, piano music, vocal music. Any opera scores I have are organized alphabetically by composer. The next question is, what is the oldest book on your bookshelf? And for that, I have tried to stick to mainly the books in this room, because of course you have seen my children's books already, so I'm not going to tell you more about those. In terms of main adult fiction and nonfiction, I then started to overthink this question. So I actually have three books, because you could say that my oldest books in terms of existence in the world are the Bible. This is my Oxford annotated Bible, which is especially good if you're writing essays. I got that recommendation from a college professor of mine. And the Quran. This is a translation of the Quran, but it does have a parallel Arabic text, which is really fascinating. And I found the first chapter really fascinating. And then I hit the Cow, which is possibly the longest book in the whole thing, and is very abstract, and yeah, Jonathan and I hit a wall when we got to that chapter. So if any of you all have read the Quran or have studied the Quran, 
can you give me some advice for how to get through that wall? Then I thought, well, perhaps you mean oldest edition of a book. So for that, I have to say my oldest edition is this edition of Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, which has the Hugh Thompson illustrations from 1891. Then, of course, it could mean book that you have owned for the longest amount of time. And for that, I hunted around and I believe it is The Seeing Stone by Kevin Crossley Holland, which was actually a birthday present from Jonathan when we were 10, I think. And I remember starting it. I remember nothing of the plot and I don't remember finishing it. And I've been, I toy with the idea of discarding it and then I feel really guilty so I hang on to it. So yeah, I, I have an interesting relationship with this book. Sorry, Jonathan. Conversely, what is the newest book on your shelf? Again, I overthought this one. The newest book that I own by publication date is Miss Austin by Jill Hornby, which was published on April 7th of last year, 2020. However, my most recent purchase was hard to decide because I hauled a whole bunch around the same time, but I believe the absolute newest one is The Complete Map and Lucia Volume 1 by E.F. Benson. Next, what is the longest book on your shelf? Again, I overthought this one. Are you seeing a trend? The longest book in terms of number of pages total has to be my complete works of William Shakespeare, which looks like so. How many pages is this anyway? Counting the chronologies and genealogies of the houses of York and Lancaster and all sorts of extra information at the back of the book, it is 2,482 pages. So it includes the poems, the sonnets, and a transcript of the excerpt of the play Sir Thomas More that Shakespeare left unfinished, collaborated on. I'm not entirely sure what the deal is with it. But counting all of that, the actual Shakespearean text, it runs to 2,470 pages. So quite the workout to even hold this up. However, one could argue that each individual play is a book by itself. In that case, the longest single novel that I have that is not a bind up of any sort has to be the classic War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, which in this edition runs to not counting notes, this edition of War and Peace runs to 1,358 pages. The next question is, which is the shortest book on your shelves? And it took some hunting, but I believe my shortest book is A is for Donkeys, which is a collection of linguistic play poetry by Jonathan Hope, which runs to... 35 pages. The next question is, what is the predominant genre on your bookshelves? And I would have to say predominantly I own historical fiction and classics. If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you can hardly be surprised. Question number nine, have you done a bookshelf tour? See, I promised you the answer to this question. No, I have not, but I hope to film one this summer when I have more time and more reliable light. Question number 10 asked me to go to a random number generator and talk about the book on my shelves that corresponded with that number. And so the number I got was 85, and after counting 85 books on my shelves, I found Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is my modern edition that I am not afraid to read. I love this edition particularly because it had a journey to get to me. I was living in Spain for a while and I had run out of English reading material and I hadn't figured out how to get a hold of more books in English. So I called home and I was really frustrated. So my mother went out and bought 
all sorts of secondhand books that she thought that I would enjoy and she thought would keep me occupied for a long amount of time until I came home. And when my parents came to visit, this was one of the books that she brought me in her suitcase. And then I brought it home with me again, so it's had a very special journey. Question 11. Do you have any fan merch or memorabilia decorating your shelves? Not much. I've tried to have a clear out. However, I do have some items that decorate my bookshelves, which I will insert clips of here. And the last question is, show us your bookshelves. So now that you have seen the decorations on these shelves, you will have also seen my full shelves. So please enjoy this, consider this a teaser for my full bookshelf tour, which will hopefully be coming in about six months or so. So there you have it. This is the bookshelf tag. I will tag anyone else who would also like to show off their shelves who has not done so, especially if you don't want to do a full bookshelf tour, if you find that rather intimidating, this could be an excellent way for you to share your shelves with us. Let me know down below if you saw anything intriguing on my shelves that you would like me to talk about in a future video, or if you yourself decide to do this tag, please link your video down below. I would love to see it. And until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.